quickly. I thought I'd begin my first minute by simply describing my own personal life as a point of evidence uh, about it. Um, I have been a critic of capitalism uh, all my adult life. I'm more a critic of capitalism now than I was five years ago and even more than ten years ago, etc. Uh, I find the, uh, the Marxian tradition, which I read in my own way, uh, an indispensable mechanism for understanding how capitalism works. I remain mystified by people who don't. Um, but that's my condition here in the United States. Given that, the following information would be interesting perhaps to you. I have done more public speaking and done more work on the radio and television in the last two years than in the entirety of my life before that. Uh, that has nothing to do with my capabilities, which are no greater today in that regard than they were a long time ago. It has to do with a complete transformation of my audience and of the interest in what I do, and I'm sure this is similar for others like me all across the United States, but you should be aware of it. Over the last year and a half, uh, I do on now an average of two to three radio and television programs every day. I do them across the gamut from uh, FM stations to AM stations, from public radio to commercial radio. Uh, my most exciting gig that I do every few weeks is in Salt Lake City, where I'm on a program that begins with the announcer explaining to his audience that he's a Republican and a Mormon. Uh, I am neither of those things. Um, and that he and I are going to have a conversation because he likes so much what I do. During the commercial breaks, we discuss Marxism, he and I. He finds it strange for himself that he's doing that, but he says it's so interesting that he not only wants to learn more about it, but he wants it to be presented to his audience so between 5.30 and 6.30, which is prime time for radio as people come back from work, he and I discuss the flaws and problems of capitalism. Uh, that is a change in the United States. So let me then, from that basis, say a few words I have about this. The crucial thing has not only been the buildup of the last 30 years of an economic system that has split apart a stagnant wage level, that has driven masses of Americans into a whole new life situation. For 150 years, real wages rose in the United States, was the most successful capitalism probably the world has ever seen. It delivered to workers a rising standard of living for 150 years. It produced the waves of immigrants which make this country what it is because they came here to get something they probably would not have found in their own country, and they were right. They wouldn't have, and they did here. It is a trauma for a population that has enjoyed rising standard of living for 150 years to have that come to an end. The real wage in the United States today is what it was in 1978. No increase at all. Meanwhile, over the last 30 years, when wages have been flat, productivity has risen. What the worker delivers to the employer has risen year by year. Better machines, more machines, better training, skilled mechanization, you know the story, computers above all. So it's a real simple thing. You don't have to be an economist, I am one, but you don't have to be one to understand. If what the worker delivers to the employer every year goes up, that's what productivity measures. But what the employer gives the worker is flat, that's what wages measure. Then the gap between those two is gonna rise. And so in the United States, the gap between rich and poor has become stupefying. And it is a problem for the mass of people, number one. Number two, because the wages didn't go up, workers in America responded, but of course as individuals, because there was no discussion of this and no organizational response. The two things Americans did above all was to work more hours and to have more members of the family go out and work. Today, according to the OECD, American workers do more hours of paid labor per year than any other working class in the advanced industrial work. We work ourselves to death and to illness. 5% of the world's people consume 65% of the psychotropic drugs on the market today. What? That's correct. Besides working themselves and sending the women out, part of women's liberation, but also a compulsion from the economic situation, is the American working class became a pioneer to take on more debt than any working class had ever seen before. 
By 2007, physically exhausted, emotionally stressed by the disintegration of a family that had been held together by the woman, who's now as tired as the 